In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I use OBS Studio to turn any generic HDMI monitor into a teleprompter so that you can read long passages of text straight into the lens like I'm doing right now, or you can even use it on video calling apps like Zoom or Teams so that you can look your callers directly in the eye all without spending thousands of pounds on a professional teleprompter. For this tutorial to work, you are gonna need a couple of things, not a lot, don't worry. The first one being either a Mac or PC that has OBS Studio installed, and I'll run you through what you need to do with that in just a second. The second one being you do actually need the teleprompter setup. So by that, I mean like the beam splitter glass and the mount and everything that you put your camera on. This tutorial is gonna show you how you can use any generic HDMI monitor for the teleprompter rather than having to spend hundreds if not thousands on a professional teleprompter monitor that has things like the mirroring of the image built in. We're actually gonna do that using software instead which is a much cheaper option and allows you to use a whole range of monitors. So now you know what you need, let me show you how to set it up. I've got my MacBook Pro here and I'm using a fresh install of OBS. A couple of the things that you can do in the beginning just to check that your settings are correct. There's only really one thing that you need to check if you go into the settings. Just go down to video and just check that you do have 1080p set for both the base canvas and the output scaled resolution as well. Uh, you're not streaming with OBS or recording. You're just going to be feeding your HDMI monitor. So it doesn't really matter what the FPS value is set to. If you want it looking a bit more smooth, you can set it to 50 or 60 rather than 25 or 30. Then click OK, and that's really the only setting that you need. At this point, you are going to want to make sure that you have your monitor plugged into your computer. Now, for me, with the monitor that I'm using right now, it's one of these cool portable monitors where I can both power it and feed the vision via one cable, which is a USB-C cable. So I've got just got one cable going from my Mac to the monitor, and that's giving it power and the uh, video. But it doesn't need to be a fancy monitor like that. You can just come out of your computer via an HDMI and then feed that HDMI into the computer. As long as it's plugged in and your device or your computer sees it as an external monitor, this will work. So once you've done that, once you have it plugged in, what you need to do is on the preview screen here in OBS, which at the moment is just blank for me, you're going to right hand click and select full screen projector preview. And then you can see my secondary monitor, my 1080p monitor is there. And that's just going to mirror that blank image. And now my teleprompter monitor here has just gone completely blank because there's nothing on the screen. But anything that we put in OBS will now be mirrored to the teleprompter. But at this stage, if we try and put some text on there, it will look strange because we haven't done the mirroring yet. Uh, and that's what I want to show you first. I actually want to do a quick tutorial of how to set up scrolling text like you'd be used to seeing in newsrooms when you see anchors reading off their teleprompter. And then after that, I'll also show you how to use it for things like Zoom calls so that you can look your participants in the eye. So let's do scrolling text first. So what we'll do, we'll go into, I've got one scene created here. We'll add a source and that is going to be the text source here. And we'll just call this Teletext, or you could call it script, whatever you like. And I'm going to copy some text off the Blackmagic website here that we can just use as example text for what I want to read. And then if we just scroll down, you can obviously set the font to anything that you like and things like that. There's a couple of other options that we do need to select. The first one is word wrap. We don't want the words being cut off halfway through when it goes to a next line. And then the custom text width, width You'll need to have a play around of what suits your monitor, but for me, it's around about 2000. So I probably recommend starting around there and then see what works for you. So if I click OK on that now, you can see it pretty much fills my whole monitor. Uh, and if you look at the, uh, the actual shot I've got here of the teleprompter, you can see it does fill the whole monitor, but obviously it's back to front because we're not doing any of that mirroring yet. So at this point, what I do like to do though is do the mirroring first and then we'll resize it and reposition it. So what you need to do is right hand click on that source, that teletext source and go to transform. And then you'll need to have a play around depending on what rotation you have your monitor. You'll, you may need to flip it horizontally and vertically. For me, the way that I have my monitor mounted, I only need to flip it vertically. So you may need to do both of these or you may only need to do one, but have a play around one of the, the options will work for you. So if I flip mine vertically, you can now see that this has worked correctly. And so now I can read the text on my teleprompter screen. 
And then we need to resize this. So you, there's a number of ways you can do it. You can just click and drag like this, or you can uh, actually go into the settings. If we click right hand click and go to transform, we can edit transform and change the sizing of the boxes. For me, I much prefer clicking and dragging to reposition it. Now you'll notice here, this is now because we I flipped it vertically, this is actually the bottom of the text. So what I often do is drag this around halfway up until I get the, the resized tools here, then just drag it in, make it a lot smaller, and then just bring this back up. Now in terms of the positioning where I like it, uh, I like the top line. I don't I don't fill my whole screen and it's completely up to you. It'll be dependent on your eye line and how far your camera is away from you. Because my camera is quite close, I'm very conscious that I don't want to be sort of looking over to the corner of the screens too much. I want my eye line to be right where the lens is. So for that reason, I actually make the sort of field of, of text quite narrow. Um, and then I just position it so it's around about the top of the lens so that the, the top line is just at the top of the lens. So my eye line looks like I'm looking right into the lens like this. And then when you've got your positioning good, I might just make it a little thinner as well. So if we just shrink it down a little bit, you only need to do this once, by the way. So it's worth spending the time getting the positioning right. Um, but let's go with that for now. I reckon around there's good. So now I've got it in the right position, we can, we don't need to hit save or anything like that. It's ready for us to use. But I hear what you're saying. How do you get it to scroll? Well, that's actually a filter that you can apply to the text. So if we click on that text layer again and either right hand click and go to filters or in the new version of OBS, you actually have a separate button for it now as well. If you go to filters, click on the plus icon, you actually have a scroll option here. So if you select that, click OK. And you'll see you've got horizontal speed and vertical speed. Now I have the loop option turned on and that just means if it's a short passage of text, it will just keep looping. You don't have to have it on, you can turn it off. Uh, and then when you're ready to start reading, all you need to do each time is control the speed of the, the scroll of the text. So you come into this filter menu, I'm actually gonna just scroll it back here and then I'll give you a little example. So I've scrolled it back, let's say I hit record now, scroll it forward and you can see the text scrolling up to the lens and when it gets to a level I'm comfortable with, I start reading. So, the new Blackmagic Ursa Broadcast G2 is an incredibly powerful camera designed for both traditional and online broadcasters. The three cameras in one design allows for it to work as, four, as a 4K, you get the idea. Uh, and I can actually, what I tend to do if uh, I know that the rough speed that I'm used to reading from doing this a couple of times now, is around 240, 260. So sometimes I just leave it on that. Other times what I'll actually do is if I want to spend more time on a particular section, I'll just keep hold of my mouse and just move the slider as I'm reading to get it at a comfortable pace at that moment in time. Now to reset to the beginning, you can just select here, go to zero, and it will automatically jump right back up to the beginning of your passage where you can then scroll back again and reset. And it really is that easy. I found it so much quicker to film my videos now when I'm using my teleprompter. And the real benefit of this is you're not having to spend a bunch of money on some professional teleprompt software and going out and buying an iPad that works with that, or even spending, as I mentioned before, hundreds, if not thousands on a professional teleprompter monitor. And when you bundle that with the software, it really gets pricey. You can do this with OBS, which is free, and an old monitor that you've got lying around at home, you can put that monitor to use and turn it into your new teleprompter setup. So that's how to get scrolling text working on your teleprompter. But what happens if you wanna use it for things like Zoom calls so that you can look your participants directly in the eye when you're speaking to them? I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. But first I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. With topics like film and video, graphic design, illustration, photography, marketing, and many more, it's an amazing way to get started learning something new or grow your skills by learning from experts. So if you're looking to learn about animation, for example, then Jake Bartlett's Animating With Ease in After Effects course is the one for you. Or maybe you wanna up your YouTube game. If so, definitely check out Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success class. 
I'm taking it at the moment and have found it so useful when it comes to writing my scripts and planning out my videos. And I know many of you who watch my videos for black magic stuff are looking to learn more about DaVinci Resolve. Well, Skillshare has a number of classes for both color grading and editing that are perfect for beginners. Like this DaVinci 17 course from Mustafa Nassar. He's created short but detailed videos explaining each section of DaVinci and all of the effects and functions built into it. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And because I've teamed up with Skillshare on this video, the first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium so you can explore your creativity. Right, on with the tutorial, let me show you how you can now use your teleprompter for things like Zoom calls and other video calling apps so that you can actually look your participants in the eye when you're speaking to them. So we've done our text layer here. I'm gonna create a new layer. And basically what we're gonna do is we're going to send a feed of our screen on our main computer to the teleprompter monitor, but have it mirrored. So I'm gonna click the plus icon. We're gonna to go to display capture here. And we're just gonna call this screen. We're gonna select our display. Now we want this to be our main display. So for me, it's my MacBook. Uh, we can leave show cursor on and we don't wanna do any cropping. So I'm just gonna click okay to that. And then I'm gonna put that full screen. So you can, if you're on a Mac, you can press command F to make it full screen. The other thing you can also do is do transform and then fit to screen, which is down here. And that will just fit the canvas to the screen. Now you can see we've got a bit of mirroring going on because I'm using the screen to record and, uh, as well. But we, we have our screen there now, but it's not being flipped. So when I'm seeing it in the teleprompter, it doesn't look great. So we now need to right hand click on the screen layer again, go to transform. And again, for me, it's just flip vertically. And now I can see my OBS screen perfectly in my teleprompter monitor. And then I, I can do anything. So now I, if I minimize OBS at this point, you wouldn't want to close OBS, but now I can browse, uh, you know, I can use my Chrome browser here, I can zoom in and read some text. So this is me just looking at you guys in the lens, but I can see live studio camera, Ursa Broadcast includes an advanced YRGB color corrector built in. But the cool thing about this is you can also use it with your favorite video calling app. So if I open up Zoom here, if I jump into a new meeting here, what you can see there, let's just join audio, there we go. What you can see there, and now if we look at the teleprompter, I'm actually seeing myself because there's no other participants in the Zoom call, but I'm able to look directly in the lens and see in this case myself. But if other people were there, I'd be looking at them and being able to see them. So I'm able to talk to them and look directly at them, which is a much more comforting feeling on, on these Zoom calls. It looks much more professional in my opinion. So you can use this for a variety of different things. And as I say, the great thing about this method is you're not having to invest in expensive teleprompter software. OBS Studio is free. And if you've got an old HDMI monitor lying around, or even if you want to invest in a new one like I've got right now, this was $120, I think it is, less than £100 in the UK. Um, and it fits and works perfectly with this teleprompter. So I thought I'd do this quick tutorial to show you how I'm using OBS Studio with a basic HDMI monitor to turn it into a teleprompter, not just for scrolling text, but also for things like video calls and other applications as well. You can really display anything you want to on this teleprompter setup. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do consider taking two seconds of your time and just hitting that thumbs up button to let me know. That really does help. Also, if you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell if you want more videos just like this in your subscription feed. If you've got any comments or questions about today's video, just put them down below in the comments. I do read through all of them and reply to as many of them as possible. Or if you've got a specific question about your setup, just ping me an email on the email address on screen now and we can set up a one-to-one -one consulting session. We can go through if your question is about how to implement a teleprompter into your workflow, I can help you out with that or if it's another broadcast question, we can get that all sorted for you. And once you've done all that, guys, I will see you on the next video.